بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بفور اسٹارٹنگ آور لیکچر آئی وڈ لائک ٹو انٹروڈیوس مائی سیلف مزمل حسین ڈیڈ بی ایس سی ٹیکسٹائل انجینئرنگ فرام نیشنل ٹیکسٹائل یونیورسٹی ان ٹو تھاؤزنڈ فور ٹو تھاؤزنڈ فائیو آفٹر ایٹ ورک گروپ آف کمپنیز آئی ورکڈ ایٹ کریسنٹ بہما for some time during my course and I went abroad for studying further and getting more experiences of life and to try to make my life better as well. So is, um, I did uh, MSc Clothing Management from Harriet Ford University and I did uh, Fashion Buying and Merchandising from London College of Fashion. After it, I worked uh, at F&F, which is a clothing brand for Tesco's, which is uh, one of the biggest supermarket across the globe. I also worked with the Arcadia Group in UK, which is the leader in fashion business in UK High Street. So that's how I am. And uh, now I'm trying to uh, make my career in uh, teaching so let's see how does it goes from here and uh, the topic uh, we are going to discuss today is dimensional change in uh, fabric or garment so we would say what is the dimensional change stability actually is the resistance of the fabric that have on its own when their could be any changes in uh, fabric particularly in a length or width wise so I would say in other words the resistance of the fabric which exists for the changes in its directions so that is called the dimensional uh, change stability in fabric or a garment in next slide we are going to discuss what is the shrinkage and the type of shrinkages the shrinkage uh, is uh, would explain the shrinkage in uh, textile industry only the in textile in, uh, industry we say the uh, shrinkage is change in the dimensions of fabric this change could be a contraction or could be expansion under certain conditions such as washing, drying, dry cleaning, steaming or pressing. And uh, now we are going to discuss about uh, the type of shrinkage which could be relaxation shrinkage, hygrel uh, shrinkage, uh, sorry hygrel expansion and uh, swelling shrinkage, felting shrinkage progressive shrinkage or thermal shrinkage we uh, discuss uh, first few in uh, detail and I would briefly explain about the progressive shrinkage or the thermal shrinkage in progressive uh, shrinkage uh, we would uh, say is if uh, it uh, a progressive shrinkage could be seen after the successive washes, washes of the garment the a true example is uh, when we buy a garment and uh, we wash it uh, for a few times we would see that the fitting of the garment is improved a bit more and as a human being what we think that uh, we are getting more fat and uh, due to this uh, our f fitting has improved but actually is, this is not the case after each wash garment get some shrunk garment shrunk after each wash and due to this the fitting is improved so that uh, shrinkage is called the progressive shrinkage and but it doesn't uh, carry on for the whole life of the garment we would say it uh, carry on for few washes five to seven times and after that uh, the garment uh, get the original size and original shape that it used to have and the 
other uh, shrinkage is called the thermal shrinkage thermal shrinkage uh, is purely come on thermoplastic fiber when we give them a any heat treatment due to this heat treatment the polymer molecule of uh, the thermoplastic fiber move randomly or non linearly due to this we could see the contraction in uh, fabrics or even in garments and uh, this is called the thermal shrinkage the thing that uh, i would like to explain is shrinkage is very important in the fashion business if we don't control it we would lose all the money in that particular order so it is very important but it is very simple to take that shrinkage out or uh, calculate the shrinkage and uh, uh, put the seam allowances according to the shrinkage in our pattern so please be focus on uh, the slides and uh, try to uh, give some time on this video as well and i am very sure it would really really be helpful uh, for making uh, you successful in uh, fashion business and our next slide we are going to discuss about the relaxation shrinkage as uh, we are saying it comes uh, what could be the relaxation shrinkage as it appears uh, on name the shrinkage get uh, when the fabric get relaxed so is the translation of the relaxation shrinkage and uh, the fabric uh, the process involve too many steps too many processes and even each process has too many steps some of these processes when uh, uh, from uh, when we make the uh, fabric from yarn uh some of these processes are very uh intensive process and due to this the fabric gets stretch usually this stretch can be seen in warp direction the example uh i have mentioned in my slide is tendering is a pure example of a stretching due to tendering there is a temporarily stretch come in the fabric that uh, might increase the length of the fabric and when we put this uh, fabric into the water the fiber try to go back to its original position when they go back to its original position we see the contraction in the fabric that is called the relaxation shrinkage i think uh we should go for the next slide now and uh, the next slide we are going to discuss is about hygral expansion hygral expansion purely seen in woolen fabric and it is uh, a very important and interesting property to learn from our end but the hygral expansion is when the fiber get moisture the fiber swells when it swells we see the expansion in the fabric so it's a very simple Uh, but it's very important because our main exports are in european market or the uk market or american market uk and uh, in europe usually they have relatively high humid environment comparing to the pakistan when any garment made in pakistan goes uh, to the their destination they get the fiber get moisture absorb moisture because of the 
relative humidity of in that particular region of the world and the fiber gets weld when it gets weld what happen because there is our the garment is already made and we could see the gathering of uh, fabric on certain places particularly where there is a seam we could see that gathering and that is called the pucker in garment industry we use the word uh, gathering of the fa fabric due to certain reasons called pucker and uh, this is not only the case the puckering uh, could come into the garment there are few other reasons which we would discuss in our lecture which is the fault in the garment and the other uh, effect we could see is the wrinkling effect where two panels are joined and we could see the wrinkle over there and that is also due to the hygral expansion so from uh, now we have learned about the shrinkage could be the contraction or could be the expansion as well but it affect not only the size but also the shape of the garment the next slide uh, we are going to discuss is about the swelling shrinkage so is due to the absorption is uh, the expansion could come or there could be the contraction as well i would uh, explain this in this slide how does it work so in swelling shrinkage when the fiber get of moisture because different fiber behave differently woolen fiber would uh, behave differently is a completely different structure and a cotton or viscous behave differently because it has completely different structure so what happen when the fiber get uh, moisture there would be a swell it's a simple thing when anything get some water there would be a swelling and uh with this uh swelling what actually happen the fiber increases length and diameter when it's increase length or diameter so what's the fabric is fabric is interlacing of warp or weft under certain design now one of the fiber has increased its length so and its diameter as well so what would happen now the warp yarn need to get some stretch to cover that gap because there is a swelling so warp yarn need to get some stretch from maintaining that interlacing that warp and weft has this could be an option or what could be the another option the other option is if warp is not getting stretch the weft fiber move bit closer so these could be the two options when there is a moisture in the width wise so uh, what could uh, so these two options that only we have because there is a warp and there is weft there is a certain sort of swelling so it means warp need to move or otherwise the weft need to move because warp is uh, could only stretch in length wise and this could be achieved by giving them too much tension as we have uh, discussed uh, in tentering we do but in washing there is not such tension available so warp cannot move that way so actually the weft thread move bit closer when it goes to bit closer we could see the shrinkage in the weft uh, direction so after drying it same the uh, fiber want to go back to its original posi position when they get dried but the swelling force is more comparing uh, 
to the force that want to the fabric to its original position so due to this this is an irreversible process and the pure example can be seen in cotton fabrics or the viscous fabrics so now we are going to discuss uh, the next slide which is about the felting shrinkage felting is purely in uh, can be seen in a woven fabric in sorry woolen fabrics not uh, the woven fabrics the uh, word i am uh, trying to say was woolen fabrics so in woolen fabric we would uh, say is um, there is a scale on uh, uh, certain sort of scales on uh, woolen surfaces and the felting uh, shrinkage is usually uh, come uh, due to the uh, di directional frictional effect and the movement of the fiber that could come due to the elasticity of the wool so that is the felting shrinkage usually uh, in pakistan we don't uh, make uh, too much woolen uh, articles we have only i think uh, there used to be a larnaspur woolen mill i don't know they are still operating or not but usually in pakistan uh, we don't make much woolen garments however we have explained uh, these things uh, bit briefly and uh, so from here to onward we would uh, discuss the cause of shrinkage and what could be the shrinkage test so if i would repeat uh, the few slides that we have learned so what is the shrinkage and the type of shrinkage we have uh, discussed there are six uh, type of shrinkages we uh, briefly discuss them and uh, now the next heading we are going to cover is cause of causes of shrinkage so shrinkage uh, could uh, be due to the fiber composition due to the structure of the fa fabric or due to the finishing applications that we have so these are the main causes of shrinkage now i would briefly explain about uh, these uh, causes and the first uh, slide in under this heading we have the fiber composition so what's the uh, fiber composition is i would say that uh, the natural fiber shrunk more comparing to the synthetic fiber yes uh, true we see uh, the, uh, the fabric of a cotton or a fabric of uh, made by acrylic so even uh, the acrylic have some uh, certain sort of properties that more likely to match with wool but it wouldn't shrunk but wool or the cotton shrunk more so why they shrunk more because natural fiber absorb more moisture comparing to the synthetic fibers it's a simple and now we could ask why the uh, natural fi uh, fiber uh, absorb more moisture or more water or uh, why they absorb um, more because due to their amorphous region the natural fiber have bigger amorphous region comparing to the synthetic fiber so due to this the shrinkage in natural fiber is more when we compare it to the synthetic fiber and even the shrinkage of different natural fiber is uh, different as well so i think uh, we have uh, discussed uh, this uh, i have i tried to explain this uh, briefly and uh, now we move towards our next slide which is the fabric structure okay so this one is uh, very interesting i would uh, 
try to say is is because the if we see the shrinkage of a uh, woven or a uh, knitted fabric it's uh, they behave very differently even if they made with the same sort of fiber if we say there is a cotton woven fabric and there is a cotton knitted fabric their shrinkage would be different we could say what the, even they are made with the same raw material but their shrinkage is different this is due to the structure of the fabric as i explained earlier the knitted fabric shrunk more comparing to the woven because in woven the warp and weft tightly interlace comparing to the knitted fabric because in knitted usually there is one uh, there is only a, a, a one uh, a yarn that makes loops coarse we call it coarse veils but actually is uh, a single yarn due to this the loops the made uh, by cores and veils are bit looser i mean they are a bit more flexible i would say and they are not as much tight as uh, we get uh, in the woven fabric so they are a bit loose so when they are loose their absorption increases because it's a more flexible the gap uh, would be filled by the uh, 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 but for time being, we were saying by water. So when there is a, a, a more absorbency, there would be more shrinkage. And uh, so I think uh, uh, we uh, have explained a bit of it. So what the actual effect we could see uh, is on knitted fabric that because there is a loop distortion. And when there is a loop, when there is a distortion anywhere, there should be some sort of irregularity. So it uh, is uh, happening in fabric as well. So when the loop dis, uh, gets some distortion, they will see the irregular surfaces. It could be the change of irregularity in size or might be the irregularity of shape. And sometimes we really see a very big irregularities that have a smaller sleeve. I mean, the right sleeve is a bit smaller when we're comparing with the left sleeve, even with the same garment. Or the bigger back panel comparing to the uh, front panel and uh, and actually it's not a asymmetrical shape of the garment is uh, a fault of the garment due to the loop distortion that is called uh, skewness or some book mentioned it as a cockling as well so uh, and uh, when it happens really it uh, we see that it would completely destroy the shape of the garment or and size of the gown. So, and we have explained the reason or how it comes. So, what I was saying is uh, in, in knitting, we have like a different sort of fabrics single jersey, double jersey, uh, rib, etc. And this fault is uh, more visible in the single jersey fabric or the plain knitted fabric because they are they very loose uh, they have very loose uh, fabric structure. I mean their uh, structure is uh, is loose comparing to the rib or double jersey fabric. So I think uh, we have explained. Uh, the fabric structure a bit in detail now and now uh, we are going to discuss uh, the effect of uh, we get uh, due to that uh, uh, fabric uh, structure
and uh, the effect uh, of uh, the shrinkages on uh, knitted fabric so the first heading was given is rib or plain cochlear it says rib dash plain cochlear is the difference in the relaxed structure as I explained even in knit the uh, rib fabric has a different structure is closed is uh, uh, have a bit strong they are strongly interlaced comparing uh, to the single knit fabric and uh, because when there is there is a rib at uh, usually we put the rib on collars or even at bottom hem and uh, make the front or back panel with the single jersey in and when we see that sort of garment and uh, when there is a different in the relaxed uh, width of two structure we would see there is a gathering of uh, uh, in the garment and that is due to the relaxed uh, width of uh, two different fabrics so and uh, this uh, is called the replane cochlea and uh, the next uh, heading is panel edge cochlea the uh, panel uh, edge uh, cochlea occur when the loops are stretched in lengthwise when the in this slide we are saying when the loops are stretched in the lengthwise there would be contraction to the uh, uh, adjacent uh, panel of uh, the fabric i think uh, we have already explained uh, the uh, process uh, how does uh, the uh, wheels uh, or the warp get some sort of stretch so due to this stretch there is a contraction in the adjacent uh, plain knit fabric and uh, the next uh, uh, heading we are going to discuss is about uh, random overall cochling in random overall cochling really it destroy the shape of the garment fully usually if we uh, talk about the women's wear uh, usually they have uh, their uh, front panel is a uh, bit uh, bigger than uh, the back panel but due to the overall random cochling we would see their uh, front panel is far shorter than the uh, back uh, panel of that garment so it is not uh, the is uh, asymmetrical shape of the garment actually is the fault and when it happened everybody could clearly see that is not the shape of the garment actually is a fault and it could be anywhere as well and this uh, random overall cochling the reason uh, for the random overall cochling is the unbalanced yarn and what could be the uh, unbalanced yarn the yarn with incorrect uh, when we make a, a sort of uh, a thread or when we use the yarn we uh, put different sort of yarns we make a A different uh, sort of yarn in a, a how could I explain this is uh, I would say that uh, the uh, if uh, we mix a single yarn or two folded yarn in an incorrect ratio so the yarn would be unbalanced it might give a bit sort of a, a decoration uh, at certain points but actually is uh, 
the effect uh, we would get would be reverse if we use that fabric into the garment so uh, I think uh, I have explained uh, uh, these things uh, now is uh, so what I'm trying to say is the random overall coupling comes due to unbalanced yarn and the it would completely destroy the shape of the garment and uh, now we are going to discuss about the spirality spirality is also come due to the fabric shrinkage and is the angular displacement of uh, yarns yeah and we could calculate this as well uh, spirality and uh, shrinkages uh, could uh, be calculated uh, differently but spirality uh, is a fault of uh, the garment that come due to the shrinkage so we discuss this slide as well and now we are going to discuss about the finishing application so the applications uh, come in uh, there is a shrinkage due to the uh, in wet processing or there is like too many other finishing uh, processes that uh, we carried on applied on a fabric so like uh, we have already discussed about calendaring is the same as gentling is the two different names and uh, due to this the fabric get shrunk when we relax that fabric and as we have already explained in the relaxation shrinkage it could be taken out uh, by dipping into the water but some of uh, the uh, shrinkage remain in the fabric as uh, we discuss under the heading of progressive shrinkage and that is called the residual shrinkage so now we have discussed the causes of shrinkage it could be due to the fiber could be due to the fabric structure or could be the finishing applications that we applied on a fabric or even on the garments now we are going to discuss about the tests of the for the fabric shrinkages American Society for Testing and Material has given uh, has performed uh, this test under 7983-17 for evaluating the uh, shrinkage in dry and bad condition and uh, these tests are also available online on their website if we uh, want to go to learn about but it's exactly the same uh, process that uh, we are uh, going to discuss in uh, our next slide and uh, ATTC uh, has uh, given uh, the name of shrinkage test uh, under the heading of 135 so but uh, we, I think as we are uh, studying the testing so I would recommend ASTM more comparing to ATTC so the test is under the heading of 7 ASTM 7983-17 and how could we do this test the test is really really very simple is the <laughs> what is it is the actually it's the measurement of length and width wise 
before and after a selected uh, process because it is a ratio so that's why we uh, express it in a percentage so shrinkage percentage could be calculated as 100 multiplied by b minus a divided by e what is b what is a b is the change in the dimension after a certain treatment and a is the original dimension so if the number comes negative it would be a contraction and if the number get positive it would be an expansion in other words we would say when there is an expansion as we explained uh, uh, under the heading of uh, high grade expansion the shrinkage would come as a positive number and for any sort of contraction like relaxation uh, sh shrinkage the shrinkage percentage would be come in a negative number and uh, our next slide we are going to discuss how actually we perform that test the test we are going to perform is uh, as uh, we're saying is a simple measurement and uh, of a sample before certain treatment and after certain treatment so the length of the sample uh, according to the British standard different uh, there is a different standard set we are discussing the British standard over here according to the British uh, standards the sample must be 500 millimeter to 500 millimeter if it's a crucial work so the sample must be the 500 millimeter multiplied by 500 millimeter and for the routine uh, fabrics the sample must be the 300 millimeter into 300 millimeter so that is the sample uh, length and width and uh, the thing uh, they are saying that samples are marked 50 millimeter from all of the edges so the first uh, marking we will make is the 50 millimeters from the edge of the fabric if it's a bigger sample if, the, if it is the sample of 500 millimeters into 500 millimeters the marking would be the 50 millimeters from the edge across whole uh, uh, sides and if the sample is 300 millimeter to 300 millimeter we would mark 25 millimeter across all the edges and uh, after these measurement we would put these sample into the required treatment that we are going to uh, perform and the uh, thing that i would like to explain is is before uh, sending these samples into the garment wash i would strongly recommend to make a secure stitch across all the edges because uh, we could use the overlock uh, stitch for the uh, making it uh, on a uh, for making it secure because if the, if there is no secure stitch the thread of the yarn would reveal on its own due, during the washing process and uh, the length and width of the uh, fabric uh, would be the smaller knot due to the shrinkage because it would be smaller due to the uh, revealing of uh, thread during the washing so uh, the tip from my side is always make a secure stitch 
across all the sides of the sample and after it uh, we could uh, take the measurements and uh, calculate the shrinkage uh, as uh, we have explained already b minus a divided by a multiplied by 100 this is a manual uh, way for calculating the shrinkage and uh, the other way is uh, perform this test by using the equipment that is called HK Theta is a digital system that uh, is performed for calculating the dimensional change and even the spirality as well this one is a very uh, in this uh, device is very simple to uh, use we need to put the uh, sample into the testing platform that's all we need to do <laughs> and after that the HK Rita would calculate all the changes in dimensions and the spirality and how does that HK Rita works it consists of a lightning box with uh, standard control illumination in all directions have a very high resolution camera and there is a set of softwares that actually calculate uh, the uh, change in dimensions and spirality and there is an other uh, uh, steaming system called uh, steaming cylinder called Vira this one is uh, designed to access the shrinkage that take place during the press process so these all are these are some sort of ways for calculating uh, the shrinkage and when uh, we calculate uh, that shrinkage we would put this in, into the our pattern and after calculating the shrinkage we would put this yeah, the same allowance into the our pattern and make our garments according to that shrinkage that's all is so we have calculated the shrinkage and uh, we added it to our pattern if we don't add it up to the pattern it the order would be a complete loss as I have explained earlier so it's a very simple really it's just uh, I'm re uh, repeating this uh, again now again and again it's a simply it's a measurement before the treatment and after the treatment and uh, after calculating that uh, 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 difference we put this into our uh, pattern as a seam allowance we could say or uh, as a shrinkage allowance and all would happen is when our garment uh, gets stitched and we send it a certain uh, procedures like certain washes or uh, for uh, drying or for steaming the size and the shape of garment would remain exactly on the uh, standards that we are requiring for and along this there wouldn't be any sort of pucker on the garment due to the shrinkage or there wouldn't be any wrinkle or that sort of effect that we see usually in the garment so that's uh, I think uh, we have explained these thing uh, uh, really that need to be explained at uh, this point and that's how I would say it was uh, our, uh, our lecture uh, would be end uh,
in a few minutes now and that's uh, we have already explained that is uh, the if anybody doesn't uh, understand anything please don't hesitate to ask feel free to ask I, it would be my pleasure to answer and I would try to answer with an authentic reference of that particular question and even if I'm not able to uh, answer at uh, the same time hopefully which wouldn't be case but if it happens I would uh, promise to answer it later by discussing it uh, with my colleagues with my seniors or uh, by consulting the different books so this uh, is a commitment uh, from my side and uh, that's all we are really at this time and uh, hopefully guys you have enjoyed uh, your lecture is uh, and uh, learn something uh, new during this lecture so that's all I am and soon there would be I think there is an azan uh, has already started and uh, we could uh, I think we could finish this lecture because we have already uh, uh, discussed the things that need to be uh, uh, explained I have already explained the things that need to be explained so thank you very much for your time and uh, thank you very much uh, for watching this video have a nice day and uh, hopefully see you soon bye for now